In this video, I will explain some more advanced concepts regarding track intersections and signals for trains in Satisfactory after Update 5, as well as some signal troubleshooting. Check the description for chapters if there's something specific that you're looking for. Like the first video, which by the way, if you haven't seen it yet, click in the upper right corner right now to review the foundation to what I will be explaining in this video. I will start out a little easier with some basic functional track setups that you will need sometimes on larger railways based on space limitations in the world and where you build. Later on in the video, I'll go into signal troubleshooting tips for a few specific scenarios that I've run into so far, so we may need another video again in the future to look after some more of these use cases, but this will work for now. I'll begin with the different ways to build a turnaround or loopback track on a two-track mainline because it leads into a more advanced concept, the roundabout. This is not to be confused with a bi-directional single-track mainline, which would use a balloon track, although that term is usually re regarding a loopback at the end of a spur or siding which comes back onto the same track. There are two ways to do this. We can do a turnaround intersection, but on a main track, this can create a bottleneck point. A better option is to separate the two mainline tracks with enough room for a turnaround track between them. Otherwise, create a crossover bridge if your track is on the ground, or duck under if you have a raised mainline track to avoid interfering with the mainline. Plan for future expansion by building something once. Let's signal this intersection. It's easy. Think about controlling the intersection and, since any train using it will likely interfere with both directions of track depending on how large you make this, you may or may not want to add a block inside the loopback track as well. Path signals should be used for any intersection loopback as trains passing one another will be able to continue if their paths don't cross. A better version of this is a separated track mainline with a loopback track between them. This is also half of a roundabout, so if you need to expand it later, the process is definitely a little easier. I have personally found four-way junctions with path signals to be more effective than small roundabouts since the number of paths and directions that don't cross are greater with a two-track mainline four-way junction than with a single track roundabout. But some people like the cleaner look of a roundabout. Make sure to build it large enough for potentially four diverging and converging routes. Signals complain if they are too close and, unfortunately, it's difficult to attach two switches back to back, so leave some room. I have done it in the past, but I am unable to replicate it in update 5, so it may be a build from prior to update 5, but it works, so I'm not changing it on mine. You will need at least one signal on the loopback track between the main lines in order to allow trains traveling in opposite directions that are not using the loopback track to pass simultaneously without taking up the entire intersection. You can replicate this with the diagram here if you'd like to build this. The arrows denote signal placement, and I used all block signals. Let me show you a 30 second build hack I figured out after learning about a barrier snapping hack from YouTuber It's Bits. Notice how the track centerline here is straddling two foundations, but the gates want to snap to a full foundation. Use four barriers stacked on top of each other, centered on the center line of the track. Then, the gate will center itself on top of the barriers. Build both sides, then build the gates under them. If you are having trouble with snapping the lower gates, you can snap the wall to the gate edge first, zooping down, then add the lower gate. And voila! Gates centered on a half foundation. Let's look at another concept of signaling that can affect where you might place your signals. Momentum and braking. To preface, trains are what plan the paths. Signals only control the movement of those trains. Trains look forward one block from the block they are in to look for potential red block signals, but look along their path past multiple block signals for as far as their momentum will take them for any path signals. You can see an example of this here. The train begins braking long before it enters the block prior to the path signal controlled block entrance. Block signals that are on converging routes, or rails that join onto the currently traveled line, also take the train momentum and braking distance into account. This can be illustrated here. Watch this signal as the train approaches the block that it protects. 
you'll see the converging routes signal change prior to the train entering the block, as seen by the train signal here, remaining green until the train enters the block, while the converging route signal has been red for some time. The same will happen to the mainline signal when a train approaches the mainline from the converging route. The game doesn't differentiate between which is the siding and the mainline, so the rule is first come, first served. Currently, this can be abused a little by tightening up the distances between signals, resulting in trains moving at a high rate of speed and unable to stop before a signal as two trains approach a converging switch. By compressing distances between signals, one of the trains will do an emergency brake to stop for the signal, as seen in this example. While this results in very unprototypical results, it could potentially result in a higher throughput as the average speed of the train is higher overall based on faster deceleration. In other words, it's your game to break. Alright, so I wanted to show you uh, one of the signal errors that you can run into. Okay, here we're only using block signals to control a route that has a bypass type setup. And maybe you've got a station here or something like that, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and you go, you know what, I need a little bit more control, so I'm going to stick a block signal here or here, anywhere in this loop, right? And you want trains to be able to stop here, and then all of a sudden you get this error right here, and it's uh, complaining about the signal looping onto itself. Okay, and you're like, but this is only, you know, one-way track. Why does it think that, and then all of a sudden this signal's complaining too, and you're like, this doesn't make any sense. How is the signal looping back onto itself? What we're getting here is two different errors, actually. They both they both stem from the same root problem here, but this is giving us the same error, but it's it's complaining about a different problem that stems from the same root problem. So this signal here, what it's looking to do is it sends a signal down the path, down the track here, hits that signal and goes, perfect, that would be my block. But because that signal stops at a switch, its signal can technically pass back through here, hits there when it does its check and goes, okay, we got a signal there, but then look, it can, the signal still comes back on itself. That's what it's talking about by the loop. So the signal leaves its signal, bounces back up the track, hits another signal, so it doesn't continue on down, and then it's able to loop back on itself. So the signal that it's sending out from it is coming back into itself. That's what it means by the signal is looping on itself. This signal is complaining about the exact same thing. It's saying the exact same error, signal's looping back on itself. But what its signal is doing is it's saying, yep, I've got a clear path from here to there, and I've got a clear path from here to this signal, but what's happening is its signal is bouncing off of this signal and coming back in to the backside of the signal that it's serving, that is serving it as its uh, block end or as its block exit signal. So it's, it's the same issue where the signal is coming back onto the block that it's controlling essentially, even though the signal from the front of this hits here and stops, little glitch there, the signal's still able to travel backwards and it should never hit the backside of a signal that is an end signal for it. So how do you fix this problem? One of two ways. You can not use this, as we saw the signaling works fine there. You can put two signals in and that will stop any signal. There you go, bing, and it stops at that signal. Signal hits this signal, there's its end, its block end exit signal there and no issues. Same thing here, you've got a block, but it comes back to here and it's stopped by this signal. This one here, same deal. Sends its signal out, comes back, but it's blocked by this signal. So you've got complete closed circuits each and every time in a setup uh, like that right there. You can also not use that signal at all. You can have this be one entire block and put a signal either there or on the other side of the train or have this whole loop as one block all the way around. That's fine too. But you just have to be careful with switch points. They will deflect, if you, especially if you put a, a signal right at them. They will allow signal to deflect down a new path. Let's look at another example of the signal loops back on itself error on a slightly more visually confusing example. This is a station on a two-track mainline that curves around the station and has sidings that allow entrance and exit from all directions of travel. We are currently seeing a loop error being displayed. 
But at closer inspection, there is nothing wrong with this as far as I can tell, and yet, we have an error still. You'll see what I mean by I don't believe anything is wrong in a minute. So follow the paths and you'll see there is seemingly no reasonable path for a signal to be looping back. Compare that with this. I simply replaced the leftmost signal at the switch points with one signal on each converging track. Turns out that the problem here, and some of you have probably already caught it, was that the main line track wasn't actually connected to the siding looping out of the station. After modifying the position of the track and reconnecting it several times, I had built a track that I thought had replaced the switch, but only looked good and was not a functional switch. Look here at where the converging switch points should be. They aren't actually there. Tracks not connecting when being built from certain directions can be frustrating, so always double check for switch arms denoting an actual switch before pulling your hair out over signal issues, especially if you're fairly certain that you've double checked the signaling. This is my final placement for signals in this area. So here's an error I found with roundabouts while I was playing around with the pathing signals. Path signals cannot cross back over on themselves. So you can see here I've got this train here, this locomotive, is trying to get to all three stations I have here. So what's happened is its path to go from 18 back to 15, because I don't have a bypass right here, I'm trying to get it to use the roundabout. So. I've given it path signals to follow all the way through the roundabout, and you can see they're all green. That one's green, there's one right here that's green, and this one here is also green. So it has the path reserved, but it will not proceed, and it's, uh, it's now throwing an error due to the fact that its initial path signal entering the roundabout crosses over the path of one of its cleared signals. So if it were a long train, it would run into itself, it would hit itself. So it does not allow a use case scenario where the track may, even if the train is short enough, the path may pass back along itself. Thank you all for sticking around. I try to be respectful of your time and give you as much depth as I can without wasting your time. I'm gonna leave roundabouts for another video because there's more to them now that I'm digging deeper into different types of builds and this video probably already has your head spinning. If you have questions about anything here, definitely leave a comment below. I'm trying to stay on top of them, so thank you again for your time. Like the video if you found it helpful, and share it with anyone who might want a deeper dive into how signals work. Until next time, have a satisfactory day.